Hi guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has now been at least three weeks to a month since I have posted a video and that is because I had a baby. So for those of you that have not been keeping up with my YouTube channel or any of my social medias, I had a baby girl three weeks ago which is mad. Oh my gosh, I can hear her starting. She's lying in her bed right now. She's been asleep for like two hours and I feel like she's going to wake up already. Adam has left the building for a haircut and I thought actually he's out the house, the baby's asleep, this is the perfect time to film a video and I think I've jinxed myself because she's going to wake up and ruin it. Um, I wanted to actually just do a video on my birth story so I didn't actually film my labour or my birth or anything like that. Obviously Adam and I have like a few small clips of things um, for ourselves but I didn't want to actually video me like giving birth for the internet. I just feel like that's a personal thing between me and him. Um, but I do want to tell you my birth story and I'm hoping I remember it because quite honestly it at the time was so long but now I'm like well that all happened so fast that now I kind of wish I wrote it down or something so that's why I'm making a video to like recap everything for myself as well and have like a memory of what actually happened because it went a bit wild um, but I'm hoping that I remember everything to tell you because like I said I didn't write it down I didn't keep any notes or documents or anything because I thought I'm gonna remember that I'm gonna remember that for the day till the day I die and I've already started to think that might not be the case so if you guys are brand new to my YouTube channel please subscribe and give it a thumbs up we normally post health and fitness content along with a little bit of lifestyle this is said lifestyle I had a baby three weeks ago and here is my birth story before we get into the video guys please don't forget that you can use my code STEFUK to shop my vegan and get a huge discount like it's always minimum 37% sometimes it goes up a bit depending on what they're offering but I will say if you are someone that is really really busy and you don't have time to be making protein shakes making really high protein meals all the time snacks like a protein water and the protein crisps and the protein cookies are like the best things to just have on hand um but I'm drinking like two of these a day because sometimes we just don't have time to be going all out and these are like 10 grams of protein and just and it's juice i will tell you right now if you breastfeed the thirst you feel is is unmatched it's unmatched i'm drinking through this and i'm drinking through water like there's no tomorrow but check it out in my description box the link is always in my description box i've worked with my protein and my vegan for like six years now they're 100 percent my favorite supplement brand but check them out description box below and let's get into the video. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably don't know. So we kept the gender a secret. We found out the gender at 16 weeks and then we had it confirmed a couple of times at other scans. So we kept that a secret between Adam and I. We didn't tell family, we didn't tell friends. Like we told no one, it was literally him and I. And we just wanted that secret, like, not secret, but we just wanted that information to ourselves and think, oh, only we know, let's put that in silent, only we know who we are bringing into this world um, and we had a girl and her name is Blake so she is the cutest little munchkin um, going through a fussy phase of always wants to be on top of me which is absolutely fine um, but right now she's in a cot and we're hoping that she stays there for the next like 20 minutes half an hour so that I can do this video um, but yes so she was due on does a hair in my eye. She was due on July 31st, um, which would have made me obviously the 40 weeks at that point. And she did not come on July 31st. What is going on? Um, so July 31st was a Sunday. And see when I say there were no signs at any point, like the week running up to due date, there was no cramping, contractions, I think I had one or two Braxton Hicks and I'm not even convinced they were Braxton Hicks because I don't even know what they're supposed to feel like. Um, there was there was no waters breaking, there was no mucus plug, there was nothing. FYI, I'm going to be TMI in this video so if you do not want to hear, I will say everything I'm about to say is positive. This is going to be a positive birth story so don't be thinking you're going to be put off birth by any way if you are pregnant or you want to have kids in the future. I will say whilst it did not go to plan, it was still a positive experience in the end. So um, 
keep that in mind. If you if you are nervous about where this video is going to go, it's overall positive, so that's okay. Um, so yes, I had like no signs, no symptoms, absolutely nothing that this baby was coming out of me. And I'll be honest, right, I got to the point of drinking the raspberry leaf tea every day, eating six dates a day, I was out walking, I was still in the gym, I was curb walking. I was doing what you do to get the baby in there in the first place. I was doing it all. I was doing it all. I was like, get out. Because see, by the time I got to 40 weeks, I was so over it. I found out I was pregnant in the middle of November. November. And this was the end of July. So I was very much like, I can't. I'm, so, I'm done. I am done. Um, so, yes, it got up to the Sunday the 31st. And that whole weekend, you know, we had made sure we had no plans. We weren't leaving the vicinity of where we live and stuff because we thought you just don't know and I had it in my head that something's going to happen here where like Adam and I are like 20 minutes apart or something we did have a rule that we were not as of 37 weeks so full term we were not to be more than 30 minutes apart from each other just in case and that was that was just a just in case because what if he's one hour that way and I'm an hour this way and we're two hours apart and then everything happens really really fast and then he misses it or I'm like on the side of the road or something you just don't know so we we were making sure that we were together for like three weeks like do not go astray um but yes we got to the Monday right we'll get to the Monday of the f was Monday the 31st I'm confused now hold on a second till I check my dates I actually think the 30th, oh sorry, so it was the 30th was the Sunday. The due date was the 31st, which was the Monday, so I was wrong. So on Monday, I woke up at 5.30ish with a contraction. And at first I thought, oh, was that just cramp? I'm not sure what that was. Um, I was literally right here on that side of the bed, because that's my side of the bed. Um, and... I was like, oh, that was a contraction. I actually wrote down my contractions, I'll be honest. Where is, that's like the one thing I wrote down. Uh, contractions, oh sorry, 5.46 a.m. So this was it here. They started on the 31st, which was the due date. Oh my God, how many did I write down? Um, 5.46 a.m. Then the next one was until 6.25 a.m. Then they started picking up slightly. There was like 6.50. 7.15, 7 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 8.40, 8.50. Then it got to like, they went for another like 40 minutes. Then there were 10 minutes. Then there were five minutes. And then it was 15 minutes. And then I wrote that as of 10.43 a.m. they'd increased in intensity. So by this point, I'd had quite a few contractions, but they were all over the place. So I don't know how it works where you are, where you live, your healthcare system, I'm not sure. But in the, well, I'll say the UK, it's probably the UK because we're within the NHS, which is our National Health Service. Um, you're told, so I, I planned to have a hospital birth. I didn't want to have a home birth. I just, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I would like to be in the care of medical staff at all times. So... I planned, I should actually have said this at the start, I planned to have a hospital birth, I planned to do it unmedicated and I planned to do it vaginally. So the plan was to just let it all happen the way nature intended in a hospital and the hospital we went to had an aromatherapy room, it had like the pool that you could labour in, it had baths you could labour in, it had like a, what was called like a midwife led sweet um so basically that's what i opted for i wanted to have just a midwife in there i wanted well a midwife and adam obviously and just to labor it through without medication and to use the pool use baths like i am a water person so very much use those to labor in but i didn't want to give birth in a pool um a couple of reasons Number one was you can't really tell your blood loss and I had low iron when I got my blood last done. Um, so they said we can't really judge if you would need like a blood transfusion or something because we won't be able to see how much blood you lose. That's a-okay with me. Number two, you're probably going to shit yourself. I don't really want to do that in the pool. Um, and I also didn't want just like 
all the liquids and stuff that comes out of you. I didn't want to be swimming in that. And number three, I just felt like the position of where like Adam would be was not where I want, like it's not what I had in mind type of thing. And the same for him, he was like, that's not really, I don't know, we just, that's not what we wanted. Anyway, um, so the plan was to then, once I was getting really close to like the pushing stage or the birth stage was to actually transfer to the bed and do that on the bed. I will say the labour part went the way I wanted and the way I planned. It was the birth part that took a spin, so we will get to that. So where was I? Okay, so contractions on Monday, so the actual due date, the 31st of July, 40 weeks on the dot, quite a few contractions and then it kind of got through, yeah, to like 10.45, ish, 11 o'clock in the morning. They'd increased slightly in intensity, but like I was saying, in the UK, you do not go to the hospital until you have three contractions within 10 minutes and they kind of have to be like evenly spread out so every like three four minutes across the 10 minute period um and you have to have that consistently for one to two hours before they will even admit you to the hospital so at that point it then gets to like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock and they're kind of coming every like 20 minutes half an hour then it was like 15 minutes, then it was like an hour between, and then it was like back to 15 minutes. So they were all over the place. There was no consistency, no pattern. So I phoned the midwife and just told her where we were at. And she says, right, just go walk. Walking can really help bring them on and can really like increase them and things like that. But it was miserable, like pouring of rain. So we decided to go to the gym because the gym is literally 10 minutes from our house so we packed the car just in case like all the bags and everything was in the car and we said let's just go to the gym to do a slow walk on the treadmill so I did that Adam literally went and trained like with weights and I'm standing on this treadmill literally having contractions walking along like please speed up so I was literally in the pre-labor stage in the gym on my due date and that is a funny sentence that I think I will ever say <laughs> in my life um, but yes yeah, so I just went there to walk I would have just walked outside had it not been pouring from the heavens so in the gym on the treadmill walking I only managed to do about 20-25 minutes and then the contractions were really painful like to the not really painful but you know you had to stop walking to kind of breathe through them if you like um, and that's another thing with my birth plan, my only preparation I really did for birth, obviously I've been kind of watching things on TikTok and things of like maybe how to reduce tearing or um, best positions for labour and stuff like that, um, but I did a hypnobirthing course with the Positive Birthing Company. I also had their book but I also did the online course, um, fab. The main thing I took from it was just the breathing techniques um, because if you are going to go into labour you're having a baby if you're doing birth please 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 learn about breathing it made like soon as I say a world of a difference because I will tell you how long I did that for <laughs> um, it made the world of a difference just like breathing with the contractions and kind of working with your body rather than be like oh my god oh my god oh my god and tensing up and being all over the place and um, the idea was to do like four breaths in um, and then not for this in but in for the count of four and then exhale for a count of eight during the labour stage oh my god and you kind of that that you maybe do four or five rounds of that and your contractions over so it kind of helps you to like kind of get to the peak of the contraction then kind of come down from it and just allow it to to kind of pass if you like and you kind of just go with it with the breathing and I was counting right I've done it once I've done it twice done it three times do it one more time and the contraction will kind of pass it honestly made such a difference even if you believe in like hypnobirthing or not learn about breathing and labour okay so we were at the gym I did about 25 minutes and then said I'm done I'm actually struggling to walk when the contractions are happening so I think it's time we go back home so we came back home and I think yeah, they were just, they kind of started really picking up in the afternoon, but only to the point of like, they were maybe five minutes apart, 10 minutes apart, then maybe back to five minutes apart, and they'd have like two within five minutes, and then it was back up to 15 minutes, then it was maybe, they didn't go for like half an hour, and I started writing down, so the first contractions, right through until about one o'clock in the afternoon, which is when we went to the gym, 
was I was rating them. I was, I was rating them to Adam on a pain scale so that we knew when they were kind of increasing in intensity. I rated contractions, the early ones, at a 4 out of 10. Now that might mean absolutely nothing to you because we might feel pain differently. I might feel it more than you or less than you. Who knows? Um, but I was kind of saying, right, these are like a 4 out of 10 so they're like this is the thing, I don't really get period cramps, so it was hard for me to compare it, but I've, you know, I've had obviously cramp before, just not regularly. I would have said it was probably like a, a level of a slightly sore period cramp than I am normally used to. So it was definitely manageable, a 4 out of 10 is definitely manageable. Um, by the time we were in the gym and I was feeling them when I was walking, I was kind of rating them a, like a 5 to 5.5, I thought, Five and a half is where I'm like actually walking through this. I can need to pause, do the breath, and then I can continue walking. So they weren't overly sore, but it was hard to walk at the same time. So yeah, I was rating them at like a five to a five point five, which again sore, but not not painful, not like, oh my god, I can't do it. It's just like a right, these are early contractions, or maybe a five out of ten breathe through it but it's okay if you do the breath you're fine by the way this light is changing like mad um then it kind of got to a point of they were all over the place and then it got to kind of later on in the day at half past six and half past six at night and my mucus plug started coming away and basically a mucus plug is just like this thick discharge sometimes with a wee bit of kind of blood or dried blood in it it's like a giant bogey thing. It was disgusting, but it was possibly, it, it doesn't actually mean anything your mucus plug, because you can lose your mucus plug a week or two before you even have a baby, um, or you might not even lose it at all. It's basically the plug that keeps your cervix closed, so that was kind of coming away as your cervix starts to open. Um, that was gross, but it was just coming away in bits, like it wasn't one big blob um, at the start. So that was like another sign. I was like, right, things are actually happening here. There's a mucus plugs coming away. The contractions were fairly regular in that maybe every 5, 10, 15 minutes. But they were just were not, I was just not getting that 3 and 10 minutes. So by this point, we'd kind of had this kind of labour, very early, early labour stage. Um, it's not called active labour yet, because to be in active labour, you have to be having the 3 and 10 minutes plus be four centimetres dilated. So by this point, we're not in active labour, we're just in the very early, early labour. Um, and by the time it got to about seven o'clock at night, I was rating the contractions at a six out of 10. I thought, right, six out of 10 is where we're at. They are a little bit more intense, a little bit more frequent. Um, and it was annoying because we were getting periods where there was like, there were three in, 15, um, in 10 minutes, and that maybe happened for like half an hour. And I was like, oh my god, this is it. But you had to wait till it was like at least an hour to two hours. Um, and we just weren't getting that. We just were not getting there. <laughs> Which is so annoying. Um, so we did phone the hospital and explain to them, like, this has been going on since like five in the morning. We've had a few within like half an hour where they are at the correct pattern, but then we're kind of losing it and they're not being as consistent again. And they said, you need to wait until you have one hour of these contractions being three and ten minutes and evenly apart. So I'm just in this house, walking around in my dressing gown, every like five, 10, 15 minutes, like, <gasps> and I was having Adam time them, I was writing them down in my notes. And by this point, I was just tired. I was just like, I have been up since half five this morning. It is now like, when did we even get to? Like eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, um, wandering around in the dressing gown because you couldn't really sit with them. I felt like movement was the best thing, so just walking around the house, pacing around the house, sitting on the ball. I didn't have a bath in the house, I just didn't feel like I wanted to be wet <laughs> at this stage. It was just me really just like tired and just wandering around, be just like a bit fed up, because it'd been kind of going on at this point for like over 12 hours. Um, and yeah, that's just where we were at. So we eventually did phone the hospital at... <sighs> Honestly, I don't even know. We went in late at night anyway. Um, we did try and have like a lie down, did try and close my eyes, and it just was not allowing that to happen. So eventually they did get closer and closer together to the point where I think we went into the hospital late. I actually can't even remember now. 
because I've got all these times written down of contractions but I don't know when we actually went to the hospital. I definitely want to say it was before, it was probably between 11 o'clock at night and 12 o'clock at night. I, th I thought, right, these are getting really close together now and it's getting to a point where I thought I'm actually a wee bit scared that it's now at a point where it ramps up and our hospital was 35 minutes away so it's not exactly round the corner so I thought, right, we're better just to phone them. Okay, so as we are in the car, I was like, every like three every three minutes every four minutes it was a contraction contraction and i'm like hovering off the seat because it was act, like i said not comfortable to be sitting down and like levitating off the seat and i was like right these are definitely like a six out of ten in the pain scale again as long as you did your breathing you got through them they weren't like unmanageable it was just like a right here it comes do the breathing and it'll pass have a break for like two minutes do it again basically hit training yeah, basically hit <laughs> I'm gonna check on the baby. Okay, this is the thing about babies. Um, I check her every 10 minutes when she is asleep because I'm paranoid. <laughs> um, but where was I? Okay, we get to the hospital. We check in. They put us, where did we go originally? Did we go? I think we just went straight to the like aromatherapy suite, um, like this like, this midwife led unit. Um, I will say every single member of staff in that hospital, for the duration of the stay that we were there, um, was amazing. Like amazing. Um, could not have had a more positive hospital experience if I tried. It was the best, and I am definitely more of a holistic, more of a kind of natural way of doing things. I mean, Adam is Mr. Medical. Um, he works in healthcare. He's very much more that vibe. Um, but I will, I hands down, best hospital experience I could have asked for. Um, so yes, we go to the midwife led suite. It was all, I'm gonna try and put a picture up if I took a photo of it um, or any kind of video just to show you the vibe. They basically had like a starlight projector on, no other lights on other than we like kind of Tea lights and things like that but no no overhead harsh lights there was the bed there and then they had the they had a chair for Adam and then they had like the the Swiss balls and they had like pillows to put between your legs and things like specific ones not just a pillow um, and obviously you had your toilet and then they had like the wee baby bed thing and all that and um, the pool wasn't in this room this was just like a room and it was so calming and so peaceful and exactly what I wanted um, the vibe to be. I didn't want to be like feeling like I was a patient in a hospital. I wanted it to be like as kind of spallic. I don't know. Very relaxing, very good vibes, you know. Um, and that is exactly what we got. So we basically had, I think there was three midwives in total that were kind of coming in and out. Um, and they're obviously swapping over and people are going on breaks and things like that. Um, and the first girl we had, she ended up, uh, she was there for only a couple of hours because then she finished her shift and went home. Um, and we had a few others like in and out, but everyone's so nice. Uh, but they were there at the start with us and they were checking um, the baby's heart rate and things like that. So we weren't hooked up to any machinery. So this was the thing as well. I obviously, obviously will do any medical procedure that is advised when it's like a life situation. You know, I'm not going to be stupid or negligent when it comes to my or my child's life. Let's put that out there. Um, you know, if it's advised, if a doctor says, actually, we really need to do this. It's not a, mm, you could do this. It's a, no, actually, we really need to do this. And then I'm going to do it. Um, obviously, the preferred option was that we were just chilling. We're not hooked up to anything. There was no nothing. So I'd asked, obviously, you get cannulas in your hand or your arm um, in case you need IV drips or in case you need, like, blood transfusions or anything like that. Um... So at the start of this whole labour process in the hospital, I was classed as low risk. There were no complications that they could perceive. Baby was doing fine, I was doing fine. Heart, like everything was just going the way it should have been going. Um, so when they said, do you need, 
you want to put a cannula in? I says, do I need to put a cannula in? Like right now, like if it gets to a point where things change and it seems like I might need any kind of medical interventions and they're like, that's absolutely fine, you don't need one right now. I don't do needles. I don't, I can't, like see blood tests, injections, needle, ugh. Like I can't do it. Like my worst nightmare, my absolute worst nightmare was that I would need to get a C-section and only from the, only from the perspective that I would physically know that I was being sliced open. And that's, that's the issue. That is, it's not a, oh, you're going to have a scar or it's a longer recovery. It's a, I'm going to be cut open. And that's, I would not, I, no, I could, I don't think, if I had to have had it, yes. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't have a C-section. Um, but, you know, it's just, I just, I just don't like any of that stuff. So, um, didn't have to take a cannula and we didn't have to be hooked up to the machine that, um, records the heart rate, I don't know what it's called. It was basically just the midwife would come over, I think it was every 15 or 20 minutes that she had like the wee Doppler, just checked the baby's heart rate, checked my pulse, and I was just on the Swiss ball, just bouncing around next to the bed, I was kind of lying on the bed like this on the ball, sitting on the ball again, lying on the bed, having me pace around, um, had we actually brought so many snacks and so many things with us and the only thing I wanted was the coconut water lifesaver like just wanted to keep drinking coconut water the whole time so this went on all night all night like two three four five six in the morning and it was funny because the first midwife we had finished her shift at seven in the morning and she says oh I'll be back tonight at 7pm and you'll probably have had your baby by then. Um, so I'll come and see you. And I was like, great, I'll see you later. Um, that's fab. So by this point, it is now Tuesday morning. So everything started 5.46 on Monday morning. It is now Tuesday morning. No baby. Not really much progress. Like the contractions were doing the same thing they were doing and that they were, we were getting that period of an hour, 45 minutes to an hour of three in the 10 minutes. It was going the way it was supposed to be going and then they would just taper off and slow down for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then they'd pick back up again and then it would keep doing that. Like it just kept going back and forth, back and forth. They did a bit of palpitation and it seemed like the baby was back to back. Um, and back to back basically just means their spine is in line with my spine and they're, they're going to, they're facing outwards, i.e. sunny side up it's called, if they're born that way. Technically supposed to be around the other way, they can be born that way, apparently it's just more painful, it's longer, that was making sense because this was taking so long by this point. Um, but yeah, the baby was back to back and because I, I just kept saying, I was like, is my back, like I'm feeling the contractions here? But not upper, not upper um, uterus, like all just down the bottom, like where you would get period cramp, but oh my god, my back, it's particularly my left side, I was like, it's just my back, it's killing me, which was kind of making it really uncomfortable in terms of sitting down, couldn't lie down, mm -mm. couldn't lie down, had to be on a ball, couldn't be in like a solid base, um, because it was just all on one side, so you're very much like trying to like, Maneuver yourself. Hadn't slept by this point, by the way. Had been awake since like 5.46 the day before. Humongous belly. Hadn't really eaten much, just been drinking coconut water. Adam's fallen asleep over here. I'm kind of falling asleep as I'm on this ball, waking myself up again, like, oh my god. Um, so, yeah, 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. This went on all of Tuesday morning, there's Magpie, all of Tuesday morning, it gets to the point where they're like, so you want breakfast? I'm like, no, I don't want breakfast. I want to have a baby. I'm over it. Um, that technically counts as two. And I'm losing my train of thought here. Let me think. Let me think. Let's rejig. Re yeah, it's breakfast time. I'm over it. I then get offered a bath. The midwife is like, we can run you a bath. And it's the same, it was in a different room, it was like a completely different, um, what's the word? Um, so it was basically just a bathroom because they had a bath and they had like a toilet and a sink and stuff in it. Um, it was roasting hot and I mean so much. So I had a bikini with me and I went in this bath, not the bath was roasting hot, the bath was just a perfect temperature because um, it couldn't be too hot. 
being pregnant. Um, we're in this bath and oh my god, the relief of floating in water when you are in labour is amazing. Like, it doesn't take all the pain away, it doesn't take all the weight away, but it significantly reduced it. Like, I just felt so much better, so much lighter, just floating in water, right? And the room is so hot that I started to fall asleep between contractions in the bath. Adam's on the seat, again, he hasn't slept or anything, so he's fallen asleep. At one point, I woke up, like, in this bath, like, oh my god, I fell asleep in a bath. He was asleep in the corner, and then he woke up, like, oh my god, like, what's going on? Um, and I was in the bath for about an hour. And when I came out, I was like, my contractions feel like they've gone away. Like, why, why do they feel like they've gone away? And I said that to the midwife and she was like, yes, well, being in water can slow your contractions down. Why the hell, why the hell would you tell me to go in a bath? <laughs> why would you tell me to go in a bath? If you know it slows down contractions when I have been having contractions for like a day and a half by this point. Um, so that, that, was, that was not fun. That was not fun at all. So, we are now, like, Tuesday afternoon, and we moved to a room because they were like, this is just taking so long for you, you're still not looking that close. Um, oh yeah, I got, I got checked, so I got my cervical checks to see where I was at dilation-wise, and I was still at a four centimeter dilation and this had obviously this was like Tuesday afternoon they were like your contractions are doing what they're supposed to be doing but then just having these random periods of tapering off and you are not dilating past the four so by this point I was like this is really disheartening and I just kept saying I just keep feeling it on my left side of my back so it turned out that when they then checked again the baby had moved into like a sideways position so she was like all here like her whole weight was all on one side and it was like in my back um so i ended up taking paracetamol i kept saying to them i really want to do it unmedicated like i don't want to have epidurals or anything like that um and <laughs> one uh, midwife said to me she was like we don't give out hearts she was we don't give out purple hearts for bravery she was like if you're suffering you don't need to be suffering um and i said i'm not suffering you know, I'm trying to just have this experience the way that I envisioned it for myself and now absolutely do what you like in your birth, in your labour. If you're like straight in there, epidural me up, go you. If you're someone that opts for a section, go you. If you are someone that just wants to do everything naturally, unmedicated, go you. Like literally do whatever you need to do for you and your body, right? But this was just this is just what I had in my head for myself. I was like, I'm tra I'm using this as like a marathon. I'm viewing this as like a sporting event. I'm viewing this to kind of test my own like limits and what I can to do if that makes sense. And it's just what I wanted. I like to be able to feel what's going on in my body. I didn't want to be numbed and I didn't want any of that. Like I like to I like to feel what's happening even if it's painful. And again by this stage I'm still saying it was like a six to a six and a half. The sorest sorest most painful rating I gave my contractions was a six and a half and that's right up to the very end. So FYI the actual contractions were not as bad as I expected even at the very end they were intense but I would say from my own my own rating perspective of pain I was rating them at six and a half and I am giving that down to a huge chunk of that to the breathing because it just helps you manage it so much better I took paracetamol because it, it was the back it was my back was just like I, was like I just need the edge off this back because I, could, I couldn't sit down I couldn't lie down I had been walking around or using a Swiss ball, but even the Swiss ball was getting uncomfortable. Um, I, I had not sat down still or lay down since like the day before. That baby, she sounds like a cat when she wakes up. She was like, meow. <laughs> so you might hear her. Um, so at this point I was like, I need to take a paracetamol to see if it takes a slight edge off my back so I can actually just sit down or try and lie down whilst this is going on. Um, the paracetamol did nothing and 
that was it. I was like, well, that did nothing. There's no point. There's no point um, in taking it again or whatever. I just thought, no, I tried it once and it wasn't for me. Um, by this point, we're four centimetres dilated, contractions are on and off, all over the place, going where they're supposed to go, not going where they're going. Um, let me think where we're at. Oh yeah, it got to Tuesday night and they said, you could probably go home and wait this out overnight and it could happen during the night. And I just looked at them and I said, if you think for a second, for a second, I'm packing up all of my stuff, dressing myself, because I was in my pajamas and a dressing gown at this point, dressing myself and sitting in a car for half an hour to go home, to do this at home, to then get back in a car for half an hour, to get checked back into the hospital, to unpack the stuff that I want and all the rest of it. You've got another thing coming. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going home. I said, I'm not going home. Adam's like, maybe we should go home. Like, he, he I'm going to say poor guy, but not poor guy. I was the one in labour, right? But he was obviously so over it by this point as well because as much as I'm the one going through it, at least I'm going through something whilst in the hospital, he's literally just sitting there <laughs> and like helping me obviously and talking to me and things. But you know, he hadn't slept, he hadn't really eaten and he's just kind of like, he just felt like he didn't have that much to really like give at that time either because you know, I didn't really need to be like holding his hand or anything like that. So I think he was just, he was just bored as well by that point. We were both bored, we are both over it. Um, yeah, that was kind of it, and we we were suggested that we could, not that we should go home, but that we could go home, and he was like, music to my ears, and I says, not music to mine, I'm not going home, I'm not doing it, um, I just felt like we were there, and if when, when we were there, it kind of, in my head was like, no, it's happening, it's progressing, it's going to get there, it's going to get there, but if we go home, I feel like it's resetting, and I have to do it all again, like, it just didn't make sense, so we stayed in hospital, we stayed through to like it was about 10 o'clock at night I got checked again 8 centimetres dilated wow so this was kind of from like 5 6 o'clock at night is when they suggested we went home oh that's right we went down to the restaurant cafeteria type thing round about 6 o'clock at night to get dinner because I hadn't had a hot meal, I hadn't eaten any meal actually other than like I'd been snacking on things, strawberry laces, see like strawberry fizzy laces, I'd been eating them, I'd had like a cereal bar and I'd had rice cakes and I had coconut water, that was all I could take, I couldn't eat a meal, but it got to the point by now it was like six o'clock on Tuesday the 1st of August and we went down to the restaurant because he had I actually I keep saying I feel bad for him because he was just doing what I wanted you know I was like no I don't want anything to eat he's like okay cool we won't have anything I'm like no you can eat something and he's like I'm not going to have a meal when you're not having a meal so we went down to the restaurant and we got a meal and when I say a meal I ordered a plain baked potato because everything had to be pl I didn't want flavour I wanted just plain so I had half of that baked potato and half an hour later I was spewing everywhere like in the toilet couldn't stop being sick and I thought well food is clearly not for me right now food is not for me so I was sick and yeah I just felt rotten and then from like six o'clock to ten o'clock at night I just kept feeling like I needed to go to the toilet like both ends you know I just couldn't stop feeling like I needed to pee visiting the bathroom a few times I hadn't been sick again and then it gets to ten o'clock at night and got checked they're like oh you're at an eight centimeters we can move you down between eight and nine centimeters so we're going to move you down to the actual birthing room you can use the pool you can be on the bed you can do what you want but you're well on your way and i was like yes amazing amazing again no contractions as much as they were more frequent like they were definitely in the pattern they were supposed to my camera died i don't know where that finished but we were at 89 centimeters dilated most of the mucus plug had kind of came away even though that doesn't really make much of a difference and the contractions were pretty much where they needed to be so they moved us down to the aromatherapy suite that had the pool and everything in it and um, first thing i did in that pool and i said look i know that the water can slow down contractions um but i need in this water just for like 10 minutes i need like 
the the weight off of me for 10 minutes and the thing is I kept feeling like I needed to pee like I constantly was like I need to pee I need to pee I need to pee my water still hadn't broken by this point so we we're talking like maybe 10 11 o'clock at night on Tuesday um I don't even know how long that is a very long time <laughs> um from when it started on Monday and we were at the point I was in the pool as I'm sitting there ready he's like right let's go we can do it <laughs> you can do it um and i was still writing them like i still was writing them like a six and a half and um, the contractions but they were just like your water just quite gonna has not quite broken yet so baby was still kind of on the side which they're hoping she was just going to turn around that last like 90 degrees um and eight to nine centimeters dilated in the pool doing the thing i kept falling asleep in the pool like between contractions I just kept falling asleep my head was going back all the rest of it um, now see at this point like we are constantly having so we had one midwife in the room loved her what's her name Melissa I'm having a complete mind blank as to what her name was but she was over like every 15 minutes measuring the heartbeat taking my pulse everything was fine she's like everything's okay it's where it's supposed to be going you're really well underway now she's like you're going to have a baby within the next hour or two and I was like this is it, this is it. Um, and the actual process of being in that pool was glorious, right? But as I was in the pool, the contraction started slowing down and she was like, get out of the pool. She's like, we're not doing this again. You're not having this. So the, the midwife we had was quite, she, she's probably my age. I've said she was young. Um, she was just like with it, with everything that I was saying I wanted to do. I was like, I don't want this, don't want this, don't want this. And she was like, whatever you want do what you like get out the pool though so we're out the pool and I just kept saying I need to pee I need to pee so I kept going to the toilet like every five minutes I was like I need to pee but I wasn't peeing or like a dribble would come out and I'm like what is happening here like why do I feel like this so then we get to a point where she said right we're going to start trying to push and what we're going to do is get you on the bed so I was on the bed this was so funny because Adam's like yes let's go he's standing there like right next to me and he's like right okay hold my hand whenever like do this at the next thing um and it was like feeding me my water when I needed it and like I'm sitting on the bed and I'm like this has been the longest essentially two days of my life right but as much as I'm tired and exhausted the pain just was not what I was expecting and I'm so grateful for that because if the pain had been like 10 out of 10 that would have made it so much worse but I was like this is actually like I'm doing this you know I did have that one serving of paracetamol earlier on in the day but it did nothing for me and we haven't taken anything since I tried using the gas in air hated it like absolutely hated the gas in air I'd like tried to use it and I was like this is I just don't like it like I just couldn't understand what it was supposed to be doing it just made me feel really dry and like I don't know it was taking the the breathing away from what I was doing if that made sense so I was like I don't want gas in there so I tried that a couple of times nope not for me so midwife was like right on the bed we're going to just try a couple of different labour positions as this is going on so your contractions basically we were just to start with when you feel a contraction come on we're going to start practicing pushing i.e pretend you're trying to do a poo she was like, push, as if you're trying to do a poo. That's what you're trying to feel right now. It's not like a, an ab crunch or anything like that. Like, literally, try and do a poo. And I was like, but what if I do a poo? <laughs> I don't want to do a dialogue. <laughs> I don't want to do a dialogue. Um, but by this point, I actually was like, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care. Um, so we're on the bed. She checks me and she was like, I can feel the baby's head. Like, it's, it's there. It's like, just... You just need to kind of push it down, obviously, and she shall come out to the world. Of course that didn't happen. Of course it didn't happen like that, Steph. At this point, you're like two days in. Yeah, I might as well be there another couple of hours. Hello. So I'm sitting there and we tried a regular, she was like, just try a regular kind of seated position. It wasn't a lying down on your back position. It was more kind of seated, kind of legs just like this. And of course I'm trying to turn my knees in, open the pelvis, then I'm trying this way. Then she was like, right, why don't you try like pushing your feet? So she put like something up for me to like push my feet off, kind of like a leg press to kind of help with the pushing. And then Adam was holding my leg. And I was like, I don't like my legs being held like that. I'm not into this. And then she was like, right, we're going to try on our side. And we had like a, 
something holding my leg up so I'd been like this way and then it got to the point where I'm like on all fours on this bed and like over the back of it. See at this point, yeah butt naked, well I actually had a top on, like a pyjama top, but my butt was out, my bits were out, everything was out and I'm over this bed like <sighs> trying to squeeze this child out of me and all she kept saying was like just try to do a poo is basically what you're trying to do and I'm like my whole system is out to the room. I know it's only Adam and you in here but I don't really want that to happen for anyone. I don't really want to be doing a poo. She's like you're not going to actually do the toilet. Well you might but I was like I don't want to do the toilet. Um, but in between I just kept saying I need to pee, I need to pee. So basically we're in this position, then we're in the sideways position, then we're back in this one and I, I quite like the side one. And then I did actually kind of get back. I, I was going between them all, right? Every kind of 10 minutes I was changing around to see which one was the, the vibe at the time. Um, but I just kept saying, I need to off the bed, I need to go and do a pee, I need to go and do a pee. At this point my water still hadn't broken, right? And we were literally trying to push a baby out. And she was so good. Like the midwife was so good with the pushing. She was like, hold it. Like she was exactly the person I needed. You know, she was like firm about it. Like she was like, right, push. And then... She was like, hold it, hold it, hold it longer, hold it. And I'm like, right, okay. So it's like, I was like testing myself. She was like, I want 20 seconds. I'm like, you want 20 seconds? You're going to get 20 seconds. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> I'm about to like burst. Um, and we're only really getting three pushes per contraction. So basically we were pushing with the contractions. As like the contractions came along. We did that for an hour. Nothing. Then she said, do you want me to break your water? She said it might help things get along a bit and see at this point. So originally, like I said, I wanted things to happen naturally. I didn't want waters broken, anything like that. I says break them. Break them because... So all she kept saying was your waters are bulging, i.e. they're right there. And see that, ugh, that made me feel ill. Every time she said it, she was like, they're bulging, they're right there. They just need to like burst open. And I was like, uh. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't want you to tell me there's something bulging inside of my body. And she kept checking and she was like, right, the baby's still on its side. And what was happening, every time you were pushing, the baby's coming down where you need it to be. But then it's kind of slip. As soon as you stop pushing, she was kind of sliding back up a bit. So say this was like, I don't know how to describe this. This is the end zone, right, where you wanted her to be. And she was here and you were pushing her down. She was getting to like here. And kind of, she was kind of sideways and then as soon as she stopped pushing back up she just kept sliding back to this position so it was like great wonderful we have a stubborn one but i have somebody testing me here so we kind of get to the point where so i'm like holding adam's arm this whole time right he's like his bicep was literally about to rip off his body because i was holding this one arm like as i was like pushing um, and i didn't really see myself like pushing per se in my plan I thought hopefully we'll just breathe it out and all the rest of it by this point plans are out the window expectations are out the window I'm just sitting there like get so she broke my waters and I was just sitting on the bed on like just a pad and all this water just like flew out not painful or anything like that right like I thought oh am I going to feel something here she was like you were literally if anything you'll feel a pop, I didn't feel a pop, I just felt like I peed myself. But it was so much water. Like it just kept <laughs> flying out. Um, and it was like what it was like pee. It was like warm water that just kept full, just flooding out onto this bed. And then after she did that, she changed the pad, changed the bed, whatever, straight back in trying to push with these contractions, right? And every time I was pushing, more water just kept coming out. I was like, I just feel like like I feel disgusting, like I'm just sitting just getting soaked from this water um, and yeah we did that for like another half an hour so by this point about an hour and a half of pushing and she was saying to me she was like Steph you're going to really like give it everything here because if this doesn't happen within the next 20 minutes half an hour the doctor's going to come in and probably recommend we do something else here because it's just not happening and I was like why is it not happening like I was like right we're doing it all we're doing it all and then Another midwife came in and she was kind of having a feel around and she was like, have you peed? And I said, I keep feeling like I need to pee and I can't pee. Like it's like dribbling all the rest of it. And it turned out that my bladder was so full, but her head was right next to it. So basically my bladder was so full and her head was right there that 
they were stopping each other so like the bladder was kind of stopping her from moving but her head was also stopping me from being able to pee so the woman the midwife was like right we need to put a catheter in to drain your bladder and I'm like oh my god I can't do a catheter in my head I'm thinking this is a big tube they're just gonna shove in there and I was like I can't I can't I can't do a catheter and she's like it's going to make you feel 10 times better like you won't even feel it like it'll be the best thing ever like if you just do it I'm lying there like nearly crying over the fact that I thought I was having this massive tube shoved up like my pee hole um anyway she did it it was not bad at all um instant relief like see, as soon as she did it I was like oh my god I feel like I've just done the best pee of my life and I just and I just felt so much better and she was like you literally had over a litre of pee just in there blocking everything from happening so then we're like right we're well underway we were getting in the zone here I was like I'm so tired I am so sick and sore and everything I was everything right but we are going to have to try and push this baby out and we tried again for like another half an hour really going for it and this midwife standing like at the bottom of the bed and she's like come on Steph come on and I'm like I'm really trying and like really really going for it and Adam's like come on we can do it and no it just wasn't happening the baby was just sliding down and then sliding back up so the doctor came in and had a look and was like your baby's on the side and is really not moving like as in it's not moving into a better position he said would you like me to try and turn her manually and I said do what you have got to do see when I say this man stuck his whole arm inside my vagina that was the most that was the most painful and uncomfortable part of the whole experience was him trying to manually turn the baby inside my body it was agony like I mean like I was I couldn't breathe through it like I was holding on to Adam's arm my back was arched but everything was going I was like I'm gonna die like this is this is horrendous like just really like oh so tense about it and they're trying to say like relax through it and I'm like this is this this is it like I can't um so he's in there trying to turn the baby and he was like I can't turn her he said you're going to need to go to theatre and I was like what I, I, I honestly I, I just at that point I was like I nearly burst out crying I said I, I can't what do you mean and he was like right you are we're going to try with the forceps to turn the baby and then hopefully you can push it out that way otherwise it will lead to a c-section if we can't do that so I just looked at Adam he looked at me because he knew that was just like absolute worst case scenario and I was like oh my god oh my god and it happened so fast like literally that man then pulled out paper and was like here's what can happen this is what can go wrong you might die we could cut the baby by accident xyz sign here that you consent to doing this and I was like is this last resort like is this where we're at and he was like yes like you, there's this is no, your baby's not coming out this way and I was like okay so I'm like signing this bit of paper then the woman's like right let's put a cannula in your hand so she's over here putting a cannula in my hand this doctor's telling me all the things that can go wrong which are obviously very minimal, right? Minimal chances of it happening, it's, it's in it going wrong. But I'm just sitting there. She's putting a cannula in my arm. They've been taking blood out of me. I'm like, this is the end of the world. Adam's looking at me like, oh my God, like what is happening? Um, and they just like wheeled me out of the room, like on the bed. They're like, sir, we will see you soon. Like he had to go and put scrubs on. Um, and I was just taken through this hospital. And I'm lying there in this bed like, what's happening? Like it was the longest process of my life until that moment when this doctor like pulls out paper, it's like, you're gonna die. Here's what we're gonna try and do anyway. Cannulas in your arm, blood coming out of here, off we go. And I was just like, what? Well, I don't understand what's happening. And it was all so fast, like it was so fast. And we got into this theater room, right? And there must've been about 15 people in there. And I'm so we've went from the most peaceful environment, your fairy lights, your star projectors, one midwife, just, going through the breathing, trying our best to in a theatre room full of all these like spotlights, all these doctors and different medical staff. I see tools everywhere, you know, like, ugh, I don't even want to look at them. Cannulas in my arms, needles, all sorts. And I'm like, we went from zero to hundred within the space of like five minutes and this is not okay. Like I am pan like panic mode. But see when I say this woman, I didn't catch her name or anything right. She was just like, 
like this was how close she was to me right and she was like holding my hands and she was like you're fine she's like you're fine we're just gonna get this done it'll be done in 10 15 minutes and you'll be that'll be you you'll be have a baby and you're done and i'm saying oh, i can't do it this is so scary i said it's my worst my worst nightmare and all the rest of it and i'm saying to all the staff i'm like um I'm like, how, how, how do you do this often? Like, how often do you do this? And they're like, you're the fourth person tonight. Like, we do this all the time. It's fine. And I'm like, no, this is my first experience. I'm going to die. Like, what's, what's happening? You just over, well, I overthink. And I thought, this is it. And they were, honestly, though, all the staff were just like, chill out. It's going to be fine. Like, just give us 10 minutes. It's going to be done. So for that, for the forceps, I had to have a spinal block, which apparently isn't an epidural. But obviously, it, it does numb you your legs um but it didn't numb like stomach or ch or anything like that it was literally just my legs and so i had that a spinal block so there you go there's your medication out the unmedicated thing out the window I had my spinal block had a cannula in my hand and then that was it they just like lay you down on this table and like moved everyone's lifting you it was so awkward they just lift you over they're like you're just naked and uh, there's all these people in the room Adam finally comes in with the scrubs on like hold my hand like what the hell's about to happen I'm like I don't know what's gonna happen do you know what's gonna happen and uh, I just kept saying to them please 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 try with the forceps I was like please just really really try with the forceps like I know obviously if I need to have a section then absolutely cut me open but I really 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 don't want to have a section I'm so scared of it like I'm so scared of it please just try it with the forceps so we went in with the forceps. I didn't even look at the forceps. They kept, they had to kind of cover it anyway, like the way you would have a section. So I couldn't actually see what they were doing. Um, but I felt nothing. But also to the point of, so basically I'm getting a bit, there's so much to say here, right? Basically we're at the point of the contractions are going but I could no longer feel running out of battery, eh, running out of memory. But I was at the point where I could no longer feel the contractions. Um, so I can see why people opt for the epidurals. But at the same time, I don't because they then said, like, we we're going to tell you when you're having a contraction because it was on a machine. Um, they said, we we're going to tell you when you're having a contraction and you have got to push as the doctor uses the forceps. The doctor's going to try and turn the baby as you're pushing and you're pushing is hopefully going to bring her out and the, the forceps are really just to try and kind of get her into place so that you can like deliver her vaginally tell me how you're supposed to know when you are pushing <laughs> when you can't feel the lower half of your body honestly it was the weirdest thing right because the woman was holding my hand as well and she was like she was holding one hand Adam's holding the other hand she's like right you're having a contraction push and I'm like am I pushing? Like I don't, I can't tell because I can't feel it. And she was like, no, you're doing it, you're pushing, you're pushing. See, had I not went through the labor originally on the bed where she was like, push it if you're doing a poo and go through that pushing, I would not have had a clue what I was doing. I would not, I would have been like, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you want me to do. So that paid off. That three hours it ended up being, by the way, was three hours of pushing with no result. I switched cameras because that was just not working. Um, but I would not have had a clue what I was supposed to be doing with my body, if that makes sense, to try and push. So we had this woman tell me when I was contracting and then I was to push. And I kept saying, I'm a pushing. I don't know. And she's like, no, you are, you are, you are. It was, I just felt like I was doing this. <laughs> Nothing was happening. I was like, I don't understand. Anyway, within 10 minutes, they were like, you're done there you go fabulous job out comes the baby i have been in labor for it literally she was born at 5 21 a.m on the 2nd of august on the wednesday and we had started contractions on 5 46 a.m on monday the 31st of july so when i say i was in labor for 48 hours it was bang on 48 hours and she was born and she was plunked on top of me. She was all fine. She was eight pounds three. She was a wee chunky one. Um, and yeah, it, it, by that point I was like, I don't care what just happened. I don't care that I had to have forceps. I don't care that I have numb legs and had like a spinal block. Like 
I definitely had the labour experience I wanted whilst it lasted a very long time. I got to do it in the environment I wanted to do it in and then it got to the point of pushing for three hours that we just were not able to have the actual birth that I want I'm saying I wanted because Adam was like whatever needs to happen happens he's like I don't mind like obviously just do whatever it is you want to do um so whilst we didn't get the actual birth that we wanted or I wanted or a planned like that's maybe the word the one that I planned like you, by that point you don't care and see now I don't care <laughs> I don't care which way it had to happen um so by this point baby's on me they're like she looks healthy all the rest of it so they had an actual wager yet by this point they put her straight on you just whilst they fix you up down there and by that I said like what do you mean and they're like well they had to cut you um to get the forceps in and I'm like great so I was getting stitched up it then turned out that I lost more blood than the average and my iron was already low so they said there's a potential for a blood transfusion. We have the blood here because I am Reese's negative. So they def they had the two bags of blood sitting there just in case that was needed. They said you could do with a blood transfusion, but we'll leave it just now. Um, and I had to get stitches because they obviously cut me an episiotomy. It's called I think. So I had to get stitched there, I eat in the, my vagina, right over sideways into my glute. And then I also had a third degree tear into my butthole. Go me. Woohoo! Um, which also had to be stitched. So, that was fun. Um, so after we were all stitched up and things there, we then got taken back to our room. And... We just stayed there all morning and they brought me toast and jam. This is a Snapchat memory for next year. Mm. I'll eat my toast with my numb legs. <laughs> and you hold the baby. And the baby got weighed, like I said she was £8.3 and they just left us in the room. Like Adam and I just like, obviously they checked in but just left us in our bubble and eventually um, eventually the feeling came back and well it's fairly quickly within like two hours that came back um i had i had a catheter in which i didn't know and um, this is the thing because they left like a cover over you so i was like naked underneath like from the bottom down but i had a catheter in i had been stitched all the way up this side i had been stitched in my butthole um and then basically i went from someone who <laughs> does not really like to take any medication or painkillers unless absolutely necessary for the past three weeks I have been on ibuprofen I was on antibiotics for two weeks for the stitches I was on um a drink a drink basically I can't remember what it was called that softens your stools um to allow me to go to the toilet because obviously I had my stitches down there that would have made it very painful the baby has awoken. Oh listen to um so I will wrap this up quickly but the first poo you do after giving birth oh my god like oh my god I have to go and get her. Um, but the first poo you do after is the most terrifying experience of your life. Whether you've had stitches or not, I presume it's exactly the same. Um, but oh my god, it was the scariest thing. I didn't do it for like five days because I was too scared. We ended up staying in the hospital. She was born on the Wednesday. We never got out of the hospital until Friday night. And that was because the my iron was too low they were considering a blood transfusion but changed it to iron tablets so i'm on iron tablets now um and i'm gonna get her. keep her calm down here whilst we finish the video but essentially um i am on iron tablets now for a while just to see how um we go with that because oh my god when i say like my hemoglobin was so low that i should have had a blood transfusion but you know i opted for the iron tablets and the first two weeks i felt horrendous like i had no energy i felt lightheaded constantly the color of me 
was horrendous like I was grey my lips were blue everyone that came to the house whether it was family or friends visiting um, the midwives the healthcare workers and stuff everyone that walked in was like ah uh, you don't look good and I'm like yes I know I have no blood <laughs> I am a vampire at this stage and um, it was literally it was very low and probably should have had a blood transfusion um, but they let me take iron tablets instead so you know it was an okay choice but um, yeah that is my birth story she has just farted on me or pooed I don't know which one but I felt that on my hand um, but we are now three weeks old we are kind of getting into the swing of things I am exclusively breastfeeding at this point that has been a journey in its own very thankful that it's it's we've not hit any problems yet like it seems to be going quite well um on its own she's gaining the weight she's supposed to gain um all that fun stuff and she sleeps pretty well she's having a few fussy days lately but um other than that we are in a bubble and i wanted to make this video to let you know how it all went very very long video i watched was it megan grubbs video i watched uh, last week and i was like 50 minutes is such a long video for a birth story this is probably 50 minutes for a birth story and about it girlfriend we are on camera do you mind with the farts so yes thank you guys for watching i think that is everything I think that's everything i will say my stitches were sore for the three weeks they've only just now started kind of like weaning off in terms of like uncomfortableness and pain and things i didn't leave the house for two weeks as in like i did not leave the house um i didn't i went like a five minute walk at most i did two walks in two weeks and that is that i didn't go in the car i didn't go anywhere like i literally was on the couch or in my bed just relaxing and chilling for two weeks and if you can do that after you have a baby 100% do it because you need to like the recovery is not fun <laughs> and I underestimated it I really underestimated how much you had to recover after having a baby and um, we've still got a long way to go obviously we can't go to the gym and work out and things like that for still another couple of weeks um if even you know but that's fine i'm not in a rush i miss the gym in terms of like it's just something to do and it's my hobby and i like doing it but not from a i want to look a certain way or, or anything like that like that's going to come back in time um but yes thank you guys for watching i think i covered everything i think i covered everything it was a very long video i apologize if you made it to the end thank you very much but me and miss blake are going to go and have our lunch look at her oh my god is that the newborn scrunch they do Oh my gosh, why is she so heavy? She just likes a wee cuddle, so she does. She likes cuddling in. Um, but yes, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.